This is a huge moment right here for any 49er fan and for Bosa because, well, Collins should have got hands to the face there and then does tackle him down. Oh, oh he got hit by Ouch. his own teammate. Got hit by DJ Jones. This is a huge moment right here for any 49er fan and for Bosa because, well, Collins should have got hands to the face there and then does tackle him down. Oh, oh he got hit by Ouch. his own teammate. That's a pretty hard hit. You see his neck hyperextend. He's obviously being hit. There's acceleration, decentralization. Um, they said he has a concussion. Uh, and um, uh, people are wondering, oh, man, is he going to be able to be a play? Is how, big, how quick he's going to get back? He's in concussion protocol now. Some of the things I'm concerned about when I saw this is, one, obviously, concussion. Second, his neck hyperextends. I'm a spine surgeon. His neck's going to hurt like heck. <laughs> uh, 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 but, you know, it doesn't sound like he, he broke anything. They haven't mentioned anything like that. Um, uh, uh, he, you know, at worst, he'll have symptoms like a whiplash injury. But quite honestly, folks, these professional athletes are playing through pain all the time. So I don't think that's the thing that's bothering him. Again, they're worried about what happened to his brain from his concussion, from his traumatic brain injury. Concussion, traumatic brain injury. They're scary things, okay? Uh, anyway, so he is going to go through a concussion protocol, right? So he first had rest. Um, and then, you know, with the doctor's approval, he got out there and he started doing some light aerobic exercise. And then he's out there doing some sports-specific exercise um, and doing some non-contact drills, which I think is what he's doing now. He's right. He's out with the team. He's doing some non-contact drill, uh, non-contact drills. And if they think he's uh, he's okay, he'll progress to that to some contact. And then if he's okay, they'll be back in the game uh, playing on Saturday. Now, concussion doesn't sound like a dangerous thing. But if you really think about what a concussion is, a traumatic brain injury, that sounds a little more serious, doesn't it? Traumatic brain injury. So the definition of a sports-related concussion is a traumatic brain injury that is caused by biomechanical forces. So playing football, you get hit. There's the biomechanical force. Okay. And you have a traumatic brain injury, a sports concussion. Now, concussions can be uh, can range in in their symptoms. Doesn't always mean that you're passing out. So a uh, a concussion is uh, occurs when there's a direct blow to the head, face, or neck um, uh, with the impulsive force transmitted to the head. That's what a concussion is, right? So a sports related concussion again. You have a short lived uh, impairment of neurologic function, uh, which uh, that resolve spontaneously. And again, they can range from the person just being disoriented, the person uh, uh, having some, uh, some neurologic uh, symptoms, or passing, passing out. But they don't have to pass out. They don't have to lose consciousness. Right? So um, that being said, what do you think is worse? the person who has a concussion that's out cold for 10 minutes or the person who has a concussion and is a little woozy for a few minutes. Obviously the person is kind of passed out, right? Uh, because it um, sounds like there's a lot more force involved. sounds like there's more of an injury, enough for the person to lose consciousness, right? So what happens when a concussion occurs is, we've done this in other videos before, the big thing is deceleration uh, that occurs in the brain, right? First. There's force transmitted, so that's, that's a big deal, it's below. But then remember, the brain is kind of sitting, it's not kind of, the brain is sitting inside your skull, in your cranium, suspended and attached to you know, parts of the skull by you know, ligaments, um, and it is bathed with something called cerebrospinal fluid that gives it a little bit of cushioning. Okay? So, uh, as you can imagine, if you're sitting, if you're think about it this way, if you're in a car and somebody slams on the brakes, what happens to you? lurch forward and then you lurch backwards okay now if your brain is that is you with a seat belt on in the car and somebody bangs into smashes into the back of your car what happens backwards and then forward okay that rapid movement that acceleration and deceleration causes problems because the brain is really just kind of a squishy kind of organ I don't know if any of you guys have actually seen a live uh, well I haven't seen a live brain which I have I have seen a live brain in surgery 
But if you've ever seen a, 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 a well, you didn't go to medical school, I don't think you did. But brain tissue is very gelatinous, kind of like hard jello, feels kind of weird to touch. It's like a blob. So you have that blob that goes when you have a concussion, right? So uh, the sport related concussions, you can have neurological changes. They are transient, uh, but you don't know how much damage has been done. Uh, you can, if you get some imaging, you can do diagnosing and so forth, but things can develop after the concussion, right? So um, <clears throat> the obvious signs of concussion are obviously loss of consciousness. Um, sometimes, uh, uh, oftentimes people have, people have concussions and they'll be in the fencing posture. I think we talked about this with, um, uh, it's, uh, a few weeks ago. It's a rudimentary reflex that you see in, in children. You'll see patients, or you'll see people who have concussions kind of either hyperextending or flexing. That's called a fencing posture. Um, you can go to de- don't want to go to details of how it's, how it's named that. Uh, they can have uh, coordination problems, so they're tripping, falling, uh, off balance, kind of slow, uh, labored. They can have a hollow, vacant look in their eyes. Um, uh, they can have amnesia, retrograde or anterograde, other words, forward or backwards, or backwards or forwards, retrograde, anterograde. Um, they can't remember what's happened in the past, or you tell them something, they can't remember what you just told them. Um, uh, disorientation. Um, uh, and other signs you can look for is facial injuries and so forth that you can see if the person has been hit in the face or head. Right, so, so other symptoms you can have, like I said, headaches, dizziness, balance, uh, balance issues, nausea, uh, they can vomit, they can pass out, light and sound sensitivity. These are all neurologic symptoms, right? Again, they're all transient. So, what's a concussion protocol? Basically, you kind of make, want to make sure that person's ready to go back, you know, uh, is, is safe to go back. So what you do, rest, and limited activity. Then you start light aerobic exercise. And then you start sports specific exercise. Then you start non-contact drills. And then you start you know, uh, uh, full contact practice. And if they're okay, then you can return to play. But this is done over time. And they're watching this play and observing this player to see how they're doing. You guys have all by now heard of the sequelae, what happens after people have a lot of concussions, right? You've heard of CTE, okay? Uh, and that occurs after there's a lot of damage done to the brain. Can't be diagnosed until after the person's gone and they have to do an autopsy. There's no real way to diagnose this. But there are things that they do notice, behavioral changes um, in, in uh, people, impulsivity. Um, uh, uh, and you know, there are studies that are now showing that uh, these changes happening much earlier than, uh, we, than we initially thought. Right, so there are, and even in people who are not professional athletes, right? So we're starting our kids younger and younger and younger playing sports, um, which is great, but perhaps there's some sports that maybe you shouldn't start kids on so young as they develop, right? Um, uh, Brett Farr, not so long ago, recommended not having kids start playing football until they're in high school. Why is he saying that? I've heard stories of NFL play, players saying after their careers that they never ever had a concussion. Perhaps that's true, uh, but I find that really, really hard to believe. Uh, I think what more likely has happened is that people think of a concussion as a very obvious thing where a person loses consciousness, right? Or is completely disoriented. Think about this. If you have, if you have a uh, uh, linebacker, perhaps, on a special teams, he goes in there, makes a play, makes a tackle, goes back, sits on the sidelines for five, ten minutes, or whatever it is, till the next time he's going to go back inside. But that entire time he was sitting there, he was a little woozy, uh, but it got better. They're going to report it? I don't know if they're going to all the time or have people have in the past, uh, because there's also a very, very strong culture in sports about, and maybe in particular, maybe in, particular in football, uh, uh, to just play through the pain. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that happens in all sports. And, and quite honestly, if you're an elite athlete, a professional, and this is how you get paid, this is how you eat, uh, you might just brush off some of the things that you think are minor. So uh, 
I really don't know if there is a professional football player who has not had a concussion at some point in their career, especially if they start off really young, which is what most football players do. They start off playing Pop Warner football and play for a couple of decades before they even end up in the NFL. So in those couple of decades, not one concussion, getting hit all the time, getting hit like that, uh, I doubt it. Um, anyway, concussions, traumatic brain injuries. That's what they are. Is there any science behind not playing football until high school, or is it more like which You know, I'm not sure. Well, you don't want, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to do, to do anything while the brain is developing. Yeah, but the brain develops for until you're like 25, right? Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till 26. You know, you're fully. It's fully developed by the time you're 26. For, yeah, exactly. You're right. But uh, there's a lot of well, which would you rather have? Would you rather have a kid get knocked out when they're five years old? or somebody getting knocked out when they're 20 years old. I would think a five-year-old kid getting knocked out, there's probably a lot more damage that's happening to that developing brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right? uh, so the, uh, the argument that I've heard is, uh, and I couldn't play football. My mom wouldn't let me play football. Yeah. Um, the argument that I've heard is that when you're smaller, there are, you're hitting, it's like you're learning how to hit in a, at an at a age and a size when you can't hit very hard. So okay. you're, you're learning that process young, and then as you get older, you know, like your 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 skill level and your ability to, I guess, hit coincides with your with your learning, as opposed to. And granted, realistically, if you're going to be a pro football player, yeah, you're an athlete. You could start playing at 18. So yeah, probably go pro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no. I don't think I don't think people starting at five have a better shot of going pro than people starting at fifteen. If you're a pro athlete, no, I agree. I agree. There's some people who have a, just have abilities and they're going to be good at, 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 no matter what. I mean, think about it. There's, I mean, there there are athletes who have never played a sport, start that sport in college, and they're outstanding. Right. They're great athletes, yep. right? Uh, uh, the point uh, the point I was making is that most people who most people who end up going to professional football have started really young, mm -hmm. right? Families were into football. Pop took in the Pop Warner. Dad may have been coach. So they had more opportunities to get hits, right? They may have been smaller, but there are more opportunities to get hit. It just takes one to get a concussion, right? right. You know, so, um, uh, and, and... And is there, is there, is there a, can you take hits that aren't necessarily the, considered a concussion, but it's still, it's still messing with your brain? I mean, if I just, if I just hit you in the side of the head, it's not giving you a concussion. But if I do it enough, it's going to do something, right? Well, so this is, that's an interesting question. Uh, in, in other words, if you don't see the normal symptoms and signs that you see in a concussion, is there something still happening? Put it this way, okay? Uh, I'm not a neurosurgeon. I'm a spine surgeon, right? Um, and I don't operate in the brain, but I operate on the spinal cord, which is an extension of the brain. Still the same kind of nervous tissue. When we're operating on the spine, and I'll have one of my neurosurgeon uh, colleagues weigh in and so forth, if you're operating on the spine, you have to be extremely careful. You don't want to move, touch the spinal cord. You don't want to move it. You don't, you know, even just shifting it to the side to try to get access to something is dangerous because that little amount of pressure can cause damage, right? Uh, I mean, in, in labs, when they're trying to simulate spinal cord injury, injuries, okay, in animal models, not in people, okay, because they're not going to do this to people, the way that they do this is they take a little weight and it's just a few ounces and they just drop it on the cord and that causes damage that can cause a complete spinal cord injury. That's just a weight dropping right on the thing. So, I can't, you know, a small couple ounces of weight dropping on a spinal cord. I can't imagine that even though you may not see the outward manifestations of a concussion, um, you maybe just haven't reached the threshold where the body's gonna short circuit, because we've talked about that before. You know, the neurological dysfunction is kind of a short circuit that happens in the brain. Maybe it hasn't reached that threshold, but it doesn't mean the damage isn't happening. Because it's like, I mean, it's like when you have like a back injury just from overuse. Yeah. I mean, it would be the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, right, yeah. Well, well, yeah, you can think about it this way. Uh, if you take a, huh, what's a good analogy? So viscoelastic material, right? Put a lot of force on it quickly, it's gonna break. Instantly, right? Uh, but you can also take that material and keep bending and bending and bending and bending and bending and bending it over time It's going to fatigue and fail and it's going to break right so the force may not have happened at once But it could have been the buildup of the force that ends up causing a problem. So 
Maybe people never really have a, the signs of a concussion, but if they have subclinical concussion, there's still force being transmitted to the brain. There's still being some damage being done, and they may have effects later.